have an MLG HD pass over here over the break, actually in person. You missed us dancing. You did, and everybody in the seats were trying to copy our sweet dance moves. And They were I, sweet dance moves. I anyway, guys. They might have done it better than us, actually. They did. They absolutely did. But we're into the game, guys. Picks and bands are underway. Dignitas on the blue side. And Gambit Gaming on the red side. Let's get it going. We're going to have to got see. Got some bands and picks. We got bands flying out right away. So both of these teams kind of know what they want to ban out from the side of each other. Of course, Dignitas immediately banning out Renekton and Shen from the side of Gambit. They don't want those going on to Darien whatsoever. I mean, it makes a whole heck of a lot of sense. It's really, it's their most played champion you can see, MLG. By the way, you did the research on this, so high yes. five to you. Oh, thank you. The picks and bans for every team done by Optimus Tom himself. MLG, thank you for the overlay. <laughs> But yeah, number one champion for Gambit Gaming is Renekton. Shockingly, the first ban. Not shockingly whatsoever, but we have Elise, Sims, and Draven going down. So they know that QD5 being the AD carry for Dignitas, his back is very strong. We even saw him just yeah. previously in the complexity match, landing some of those clutch ultimates as whirling deaths coming out from the side of Draven. They don't want to have to deal with that. And immediately, Dignitas takes away Thresh. Yeah, they're, they're trying to steal it out. I mean, Patoy, we talked about him being a great support player. They knew, and the thing is, that's them planning out their champion select. They said, we're going to mm -hmm. ban these three and then take Thresh first pick. So, I mean, that, that's just them planning out. It's really smart. And I don't necessarily know if I've encountered Dignitas ever playing Thresh at LCS. Not that I can think of either. This might be the thing that they had up their sleeve to try to pull out, but... Alex Itch, if he can't get that Kha'Zix and he can't get that Zed, Kale is another champion that is a highly contested pickup, not only in LCS, but something you really don't want to give way of Gambit Gaming. And this actually makes a whole lot of sense as well. They're really counterpicking each other, which is so mm -hmm. smart. Part of the reason that I'm a Cutie Pie does so well on Draven, because he's a very unsafe AD carry with no escapes, is that Skara almost always runs Kale. And that way, Cutie Pie can just go all Canadian bacon on everybody and, and pick up a heck of a lot of kills and then get intervention to not die. They've stolen that away, so Cutie Pie, although I think he's probably still, well, I guess he can't pick Draven anyway, mm -hmm. but like, um, you know, I think that really might hamper Cutie Pie's abilities this game. Well, there's still a couple AD carries on the table for him. He does have Twitch available, and we've seen Cutie Pie play, play a lot of Twitch in the past, but Misfortune picked up from the side of Gambit Gaming. This is nothing all too shocking. They really favor those team fights, especially in the mid stages of the game. Misfortune's bullet time is going to be something extremely, extremely good for that, and I don't know if they were trolling there for a second on you, Freak. I thought they wanted you to get a little rise out of you, but they do <laughs> wind up putting Teemo to the side. They didn't even pick Rise. No, they picked Teemo. No, they picked Ezreal. Oh, well, they did wind up picking Ezreal. They could have got, I mean, if it was Curse playing, we would have gotten a rise out of them. We would have. Ah. Uh? Moving on, we do have some more picks and bans coming through. That is actually a really good pickup here for QDP going on to Ezreal. When you have Kale banned out, why not pick a very safe carry? So he's picked up Ez for himself. Of course, that bottom lane Thresh, Ezreal has the ability to play very, very aggressively as well as defensively. We'll see how that pans out. Of course, they do know Kale's up the mid lane, and we see this a lot from European teams. They're grabbing the jungle Vola Bear, so. Well, this is something that we've seen a lot more frequently, more recently in LCS in the EU side. Yeah. Vola Bear jungle, he can just rumble and tumble throughout that. Of course, the positioning advantage is once again coming out from the jungle Vola Bear. Flipping somebody into a team that has something like a slow coming out, mm -hmm. as well as the whimsy coming off from the side of Lulu. We could potentially see a Singe pick. Oh, never mind. Singe is banned, so they wound up having that one out of there. We did see a bit of a fling composition from Gambit in a previous IEM matchup where they mm -hmm. kind of had that leapfrog going down. But once again, things to benefit benefit positioning from the side of Gambit with that jungle volibear. It's going to be really nice. We've seen it work very, very well overall. And they have two champions with hastes on their team. They have both Kale and Lulu. So if Volibear actually goes for a flip, they're going to have a lot pushing him forward so he can actually initiate those fights. They don't need anyone else to start fights except for him. Now for Dignitas' side, they've picked up a really nice area of effect team. As long as Crumbs doesn't misplay his ultimate and a team like Dignitas, they won't. They've got the vacuum coming in from uh, Diana, and then Rumble can just lay the equalizer on top. They've got a lot of area of effect coming from Thresh and coming from Ezra. They can just chunk an entire team down very successfully. Let's not forget there's so many ways coming out of the side of Dignitas to stop that bullet time as well. Diana can rush in and use the Moonfall to pull her out of position. Of course, you have Shinja being able to knock her up or knock her back. There's a lot of potential. Of course, we have Thresh on their side too. So, mm -hmm. so many ways to stop that area of effect team fight that Gambit Gaming is really going for. But with that Kale, with the intervention, even if you do wind up stopping the bullet time, you still wind up having to deal with the Misfortune if she's going to be the target for that one. Of course, now we have the last pickup coming here, most likely going to be the top laner from Gambit Gaming. Mm -hmm. This could be something to look a little bit more damaging, maybe a little more tanky. And they're locking in Zed, and All right. this, this might be top Zed, or we can maybe even see Kale going into that top lane. I would guess it's Kale going to the top lane, but we'll completely see there's going to be uh, honestly, a lot of options here from Gambit Gaming, and we're going to find out what those options end up being after a short commercial break.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Major League Gaming Winter Championships. We are here in Dallas, and it is game number one of this first best of three series. Team Dignitas going to be on your blue side to start things off, whereas Gambit Gaming, they're going to be on the red team. Freak, what can we expect from the early game from these two? Well, right off the bat, Gambit's actually all grouping up together on the top half of the map, while Dignitas is splitting apart. So it tells me they're looking for something early on, though right now they're playing it a bit defensively. Kind of spreading out, putting wards down. I'm not sure when their invade's coming by. Basically, both sides have actually warded the top half. So if Gambit invades from the uh, from the upper half, they'll get spotted. Patoy's actually waiting here for Gambit to come through the upper river, sort of near mid lane. So anything, there we go, and there's the ward coming down. So anything that Gambit looks for, they're going to get spotted, and that, that ghost ward's going to last long enough that they will see the invade. Yep, so Dignitas kind of starting at the line of scrimmage, going all down the river, making sure that Gambit's not going to have any easy access into their own jungle side of things. Like you said, Gambit, they're posturing. They want to wind up doing something. Are they going for that delayed invade? But as you said, the Explorer ward in the river being put down is going to be able to spot them out. 60 seconds ticking away from that one. That should be down by about the two-minute mark, which will guarantee, well, pretty much clear jungle coverage for that. Gambit, though, there's pings going down to the mid lane, maybe trying to go wrap around for something, but that ward spots them out right there. All right, they're going for it anyway, though. We do have Darien actually is going to be top lane Zed. Alex Ish will be mid lane Kale, but Gambit's going for it straight up. The thing is, they know only four went through here, but it doesn't really matter, of course. There's really no one from Digging House looking for an answer. These wolves are theirs, and the blue is theirs. So they're going to steal away the wolves. They will take the blue buff. However, looks like Dignitas immediately identifies this. And they actually they didn't even clear out those rates over there. They're just going to go straight around and try to steal away the blue buff. Darien on Zed, he is straight above going at these wolves, maybe potentially running into them as he goes down. It looks like potentially going down into this bottom lane. This is actually a really, really nice setup and a good counter engage by Dignitas as well. We'll see if Gambit finds it. Again, you can see Kiwi Kid with a ward there. Spots, oh, yep, my enemy team is coming for me. He's going to back right on out, and he sees there's just a standard two there. Looks like he will be safe. Darien cannot force anyone out, really. He's going to run right into crumbs, though. This could be scary. We'll have to see here. Does get the audacious charge down. Three talent strike taken away, but the ignite goes down from Darien. He puts on a lot of damage on the crumbs. Bottom lane from Dignitas is going to come up and chase him away right there. So crumbs will get away with the enemy blue buff. Yeah, he's going to be safe completely. They've traded blues. A really, really nice counter invade. Of course, a good invade as well from Gambit Gaming. Now, we've got the one on one in mid lane. Skara forced to flash away. A lot of damage coming out from Alex Ish. Top his red elixir as well. Viridian Kale is like sporting the green colors. But a 2v1 top lane and a 2v1 bottom lane. So the lane swap goes down from Gambit's side, but that doesn't mean that Alex Ish is going to stop being aggressive in that mid lane. We talked about this being the live patch. Had those changes to Kale, the slow isn't necessarily the same. The damage amplification is now that straight reduction. But starting with that elixir of fortitude, we've already seen Alex Ish put the pressure down upon the melee range Diana in mid lane from Skara. Yeah, it's a really, really good setup. You can see the damage up coming from him really hurting Skara's chances. It's only down to three health potions left, so a lot of pain really is coming from there. Gambit Gaming kind of looking at their 2v1. They've, they've forced Kiwi Kid back a fair bit. He's only at three minion kills. Darien actually only the three he got from the wolf camp in the very beginning of the game, so he's not doing too well himself either. No, we do have Darien. He actually started that Elixir of Fortitude as well, so he has a lot of those less health potions. Probably popped that in the beginning to want to take him through that wolf camp, so he's actually had that activated already, whereas Kiwi Kid went for just the remaining kind of consumable start, got a couple wards in the inventory as well as having eight health potions to his name now. He has to be careful, though, because it looks like Gambit Gaming wants to try to force that 3v1 tower dive. I mean, certainly they're putting in a lot of pressure. Diamond actually waiting behind Tribrush in case there was a ward there just in case. Kiwi Kid has already ran very, very far back. He knows the cannon minion means that the jungler might be coming. You can see the scrap shield is on. Diamond's still going to look for it, though. He's running on in. He's popping the ghost. Will he get the flip back? He's flashing the brush. He gets a slow. There's the flip. Can they get enough damage into Kiwi Kid? Looks like they're going to try to force this one. Edward goes in the Glitter Lance as well. Double up from Misfortune and First Blood going down on the Kiwi Kid. That's Gambit Gaming's Genja starting the game off very nicely. That is really good for them. But meanwhile, you can see that Darien has just burned his Shadow Clone and Crumbs is in the exact same spot. Are we going to see it again? Katoy goes to pull it on the Darien. Here comes the damage. But pulls him back into range. Exhaust is on. And here comes Crumbs. Can he get the damage? Yes, he can. And he pops the Lantern to get right back in. Well, that's Dignitas pretty much saying if you're going to do it on the top side, we're going to do it on the bottom side. They did dive very far forward from the side of Gambit in that top lane gank, though. So the tower damage wasn't necessarily as much. This is going to give a Dignitas with three members strong still in this bottom lane and a large wave of minions potentially an earlier tower as the top lane one for the side of Dignitas still has above half HP. Yeah, they did not push nearly as hard, so Dig, uh, though they are down in gold from minion farm and a little bit from that whole first blood gambit, uh, are certainly behind gambit uh, in terms of, well, I mean, now that they've got the turret, they're finally back up tied, but otherwise we're behind in gold. 
Diamond Prox looks like he might want to go again on Kiwi Kid. He does only have boots of speed and or just boots in his inventory pretty much. In addition to those eight health potions, he has red buff on Diamond Prox. This could be bad, Freak. He's going to go and gets the fling and the slowdown. There we go. The damage output is immense. Edward takes the first turret aggro and then walks right back out. And look at that beautiful turret aggro dancing. Gambit gets that one for free. Well, who would have thought we would have seen the first three kills of the game going back and forth in the solo lanes, as well as both towers going down pretty much around the five and a half minute mark. Does look like, though, the Gambit Gaming might have to wait a little bit longer before this top lane one's going to go down. Dignitas, though, it's a bit of a race to the clock right now. They're trying to put uh, Cutie Pie back in that top lane. They want to get the duo going on, but mid lane, there's action going down. Oh, man, they put a lot of pressure on Alex East. They're going to go for the knockup as well. He's not quite in race. There it is! But they will not follow back up here, so nothing picked up there. Cutie Pie unable to keep his top turret alive, so that will be equalized one to one. And Gambit are very much in the lead. They've already taken a couple of their advantages. We'll have to see where they move with this one. As we talked about mid game, the big team fight, the first big team fight, is usually going in favor of Gambit. That means Dignitas wants to try to take as many advantages early as possible, so they can be that much farther ahead. They thought they're going to do so with that tower. But we had Thresh popping in the mid lane. Had they gotten that kill on Alex, might have been a little bit better for them. But now they're down a tower. They're down for. First blood and additional kill. Now they're equal on Tara side. They actually, because they answered it back, so but yeah. So anyway, sorry, one to one. Uh, 1300 gold. Let's see. This is going to be tricky for Dignitas because they're actually sending. Well, Patoy's kind of going around the map. They were initially going to send two people top lane, which gives up control over Dragon. But they've actually sent Patoy down to the bottom half. So this actually might be Dignitas saying, we know Dragon's next up on the map. It's about seven minutes in. They've got a pink ward there already. Edward, living up to his name, puts his own ward down on the tri brush. But certainly they have to realize that the numbers game is pretty good for Gambit Gaming on Dragon as soon as they see Patoy running to the top. Well, even in this bottom lane, we saw Genja very briefly. Actually, you see something going down in the mid lane as it looks like Crumb's getting caught out here. Valbear swinging away, trying to get those frenzy stacks down. There's the Reckoning from Kale and the quick bite from Diamond Proc sealing the deal. That's three kills strong for Gambit. And now with them seeing Thrash up in the top lane, this could be a complete just free dragon for them. They're actually pinging it out. Dignitas knows they're running all the way down. Scar is just trying to clear out the race. He knows he's in trouble. And they are now just grouped around this. It's going to be their dragon. Well, this is something else that Gambit Gaming likes to do. When they see something going on in the opposite side of the map, they immediately take an advantage across map from it. They don't want to try to force a defense or something where they're going to wind up coming out on the back end. They want to gain as many advantages in the beginning game as possible. Like you said, even though the top tower took a little bit of pressure, it's not going down. Gambit Gaming, three members strong, tank and through, and they take the first dragon of the game. Absolutely amazing play so far by Gambit Gaming. They've kind of made all the first moves, and by equalizing that top turret, they've really, you know, they're not down by, by any measure whatsoever. So. You are seeing Dignitas shove this top lane. Actually, a bit of damage into Darien, dropping him about to half health. It's a nice move by them, but you're seeing Dignitas are trying to get themselves back into the game with turrets. I just don't know if they can do it. Well, that one in the top lane has hit about half HP. Was on the bottom side there. Kiwi Kid holding his strong, but we have a Genja misfortune out level six. Edward not that far behind on Lulu, cresting around the level five to level six mark. Could be a bit dangerous for Kiwi Kid as he is only level five himself. Still going for mostly consumables as well as a pair of boots. Whereas on the flip side of things, we've seen well actually have Scar coming into this top lane as well. That tower is going to wind up going down here. Yeah, it's certainly a big possibility. Look at the damage up coming in from Scara. He's We've seen him traditionally go for the Nash's Tooth build, and actually Diana's passive does deal damage to turrets, so he'll actually be a very good split pusher if he wants to go for it when he completes that item. We'll see what ends up happening there, but that does make it 2-1 to one turrets in the advantage for Team Dignitas. Well, Gambit Gaming, they don't want to be any slackers of that themselves. Considering Dignitas had three members strong in that top lane, they're going to try to pressure down on this bottom lane. We see a little bit of proxy farm behind the tower coming out from Edward and Genja, making sure their creep wave deals as much possible damage to that tower as they can, also denying any more CS and experience mm -hmm. to Kiwi Kid as he's still sub-level 6. Meanwhile, you're seeing Darien is at 7, almost 8 here, so a very big lead. Kiwi Kid going on the aggressor, trying to find Edward because Crumbs is coming in from behind. But Toy, he does land the Q, here comes the damage output. And they're going on to Edward, the Audacious Charge goes out, Kiwi Kid's going to turn around. There's the Wild Growth coming out from Edward, not even going to bother trying to flash over the wall. Cutie Pie seals the deal with a kill. Nice kill pickup right there. Gaara might get caught though, he's going to put out the Slash, but they're going to just walk away from Gambit. Looks like he is safe, of course we have quite a while, Teal Dragon comes back up. But even still, it's a good save there by Dignitas. Kiwi Kid finally clawing his way back up. Almost level six. He's like two minions away. He will get the equalizer. 
Yay! There we go. Equalizer for Kiwi Kid. So Kiwi Kid's gonna have that. That of course will relieve a little bit of pressure if he still chooses to go into lane as well, just help him farm up a bit. That bottom lane tower is dangerously low, but it is still up. So we could potentially see Dignitas shifting their focus there. They can keep themselves up in the tower game. They lost out on that dragon, as you see on your screen, the global gold. Not quite going in their favor, but any advantage they can get against Gambit, they're gonna try to take. Oh, absolutely, and they're gonna look for anything. This is one team. Again, Dignitas are good at keeping their spirits up. They have great communication, and, and they are just, they've been top competitors since forever. They really have been. And so these are guys who will be able to find those sorts of openings and say, hey, guys, they're overextended. Come down. Guys, they're overextended. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And they found it, and they got that kill back. They kept the turret alive as well. But Kiwi Kid's under pressure here. And yeah, Darian's going to want to pop this death mark on him, but the Equalizer comes out. Nice damage going back down onto Darian despite that level advantage. And Kiwi Kid, for the time being, going to keep himself safe. And that is very, very important for him. If he ever is in a situation where he gets soloed by the other top laner, he gets to be in a very, very rough situation. Now, thankfully for him, Darien burned his ultimate, so there's not as big of an all-in opportunity there from Gambit. That said, Volibear's waiting around. If that lane pushes out, you can see Kiwi Kid not pushing really at all because he knows that's kind of available. Uh, he would have been picked out if he, if he pushed. Well, almost with a spidey sense there, it does send forward members of Team Dignitas into the mid lane, trying to put some pressure down on this turret. Edward's the only one left, is going to get hooked by Patois Thresh, pull him against the tower. Ward in the river does tell Dignitas that Diamond Proxy's coming down, with Alex each coming for support. Looks like he's going to back away from this mid lane for now. All right, we'll see what that ends up being. Of course, we still have some time until Dragon comes back up. Uh, two minutes to go on that one. So the only really place you can focus as a team is one of these outer turrets. Of course, Dignitas has taken down two of them. The last one to look at was that middle turret. Gamut did a good job reacting in time. I've seen just all too many times a team will, will forget that their outer turrets are available and, and never be in position to defend them. We've seen that Gambit, of course, is a team who's done a very good job of actually keeping them alive so far. Well, we've seen a lot of rotation around the map this game from both sides, Free. They want to try to gain advantages that the other team can't get, and when they see them across the map, they're just going to go on the opposite side to try to push something else. We saw it with Gambit taking the first dragon. We see Dignitas luring those two members in the top lane to maybe potentially get down Kiwi Kid. Mm -hmm. They push down into that mid lane. So everybody is playing this kind of rotational advantage, trying to make something happen on the map without losing all too much for it. But as you mentioned, sometimes they forget they saw have their towers available. It's mid lane tower taking a lot of pain for Dignitas. Anytime people are kind of caught up off the map, you're just seeing how much pressure they're able to put back onto it. It is alive, but certainly you, you, t you talk about them, you know, putting a lot of pressure onto it, and they have. And you're going to see these next outer turrets fall dangerously uh, soon. I mean, 699 in the mid lane down to 296 at the bottom lane. Dignitas has very little health between their turrets. And there's still 1,675 on the mid lane, one for the side of Gambit Gaming. So if Dignitas wants to try to take that one down, it's going to be a committed push more than just to catch someone out of position and tap the tower to try to knock it down. So we will have to see what each side is going to do. Right now, everybody playing a little bit more passively. Kiwi Kid in that top lane matchup, just trying to farm up as much as he can, get himself to a point where he can get nice and good for his team, because Let's face it, he's really been harped on this entire game from Gambit's side. Yeah, they, they focused a lot of effort onto him, and you're seeing the benefits sort of reap there. 50 to 77 in minion kills on basically the, the lane opponents there for, for Dignitas versus Gambit Gaming up in the top lane. You're seeing Kiwi Kid with sort shoes and like part of a haunting guys at 13 minutes. Like compare any any of the other sides here, and you've got a Nasher's Tooth and Sorchu's already completed for Alex Itch. You've got a Blade of the Ruin King from I'm a Cutie Pie and a Bloodthirster from Genja. Uh, interestingly enough, Scar is actually playing more of a burst caster this time and going for uh, what looks to be a fast Zonia's Hourglass. Yeah, and he's probably going to want that for those team fights we were talking about earlier. We even see Kiwi Kid on the back buys an Elixir of Brilliance, so he's going to get that quite little burst of his not only his cooldown reduction but that slight burst and ability power. The dragon actually just spawned a couple seconds ago, so both of these teams now are aware that an objective is back on the map, mm -hmm. and we could maybe see them trying to force something happen here, especially from the side of Dignitas, like we said. Yeah, I mean, you're, you've basically seen that everyone has pulled themselves to the bottom half of the map there. You've got a bunch of guys in mid lane. Kiwi Kid's just trying to take farm in the bottom lane to catch up. As soon as he gets level 11, that'll be a big boost to him, but of course he is far away from that. It's going to be Gambit who starts it out there. They have pulled up the Dragon and, and Dignitas. They are not even in range to stop this. Look at that. Goes to Gambit. Will Dignitas to look for a fight? We'll have to see if this one. There's the speed boost and the heal going down onto Diamond Prox's Volibear. But it looks like Dignitas, they're not really wanting to get anything out of that. Potentially thinking that they are just a bit too weak to really face Gambit in a full-on engagement. They do have the Death Zone that's coming out from Batoy. Not being able to catch anybody. However, Dignitas, they are trying to make a statement in this mid lane. But Gambit's just not letting them have anything of it. No, they're absolutely not. Gambit's doing a very, very good job of controlling the mid game.
they all jumped in on Dragon completely confidently and said, yeah, you have five members available, but we will kill it too fast for you. Our team fight is stronger. The Good House knows that Gambit has more gold and they've got more completed items as well. When you've got a Nash's Tooth compared to just the needlessly large rod, that's a very, very big difference. And so Gambit don't feel threatened and they're happy to keep making moves like this. Well, one of the things that has to have them feeling really safe is if we take a look at Edward, not only did he go for the Sight Stone first, but he has an early Oracle Elixir. And it's just, it's blinding completely, but they're gonna go for the fight anyway. Misfortune Gold comes across the wall. Who's gonna go down first? But Toy's in a rough spot. Looks like he will not quite go down, but they find Diamond with an Ignite. Skara under turret aggro pops his shield just in time. That is a one for nothing. All the health bar is quite low. Dignitas gets out alive. Great little snipe pick up there coming out from the side of Dignitas. It looked like that they were getting the bad side of things, but that equalizer coming out from Rumble, well, it equalized the situation. That's what it does. And they wind up sniping up a really quick kill on Diamond Prox there. They created a little bit of area separation as well. It looks like Scar, though, going to get chased down by Edward. And that's Lulu, the support, picking up a kill and keeping that Oracles alive. He's getting a ward kill on his side as well. Nice. That is Edward with the champion kills. Always very good at that. We've seen it there as well. That last fight, actually, Alex Itch was not in range of the battle. You can see him kind of walking afterwards, full health, full mana. And, of course, no intervention used to keep his teammates alive. So it's a good initiation by Dickentosh saying, hey, 5v4, let's go. Well, now we do have Gambit Gaming. They take that middle tower, so now things have equaled up in towers. They have both dragons for this game so far. Kills on their side, they're still up in that one. It's three to four. They have a decisive about 4,000 gold advantage over Team Dignitas, and it's very steadily approaching that point in time where Gambit Gaming really makes or breaks their team fight, really makes or breaks if they're going to win the game or not. We mm -hmm. talked about the early Oracle's Elixir, now an upgrade to a Ruby Sightstone from Edward. They want to control the map. They know better than anybody probably in the world right now now, how powerful Thresh can be at forcing people to get out of position. So they don't want to have that happen to them. They want to secure their advantage. So we'll see what they end up doing with this one, of course. It, it's going to have to re really result in them not getting caught. But right here you're seeing Dignitas once again. Many members strong. Shove down that mid turret. Equalize that one 3-3. Three to three. But they, there comes the CC onto Ever. Look at the burst coming out there. That is a kill picked up. Blade of the Rune being used by Cutie Pie to help slow that one as well. They're consisting his team with CC. And once again, they go for a turret. They've got Kale in the top lane, Zed at the bottom, up in a duel, actually. And so, 4v0, they take this turret. And Scar is actually going to jump in on Darian, picks up a quick kill there. So Scar is going to pick up a kill, relieve the pressure on bottom lane. The remaining members of Dignitas take that second tier mid tower. Now, all of a sudden, they're ahead in towers, and they've almost caught up in this gold. That is an absolutely great set of plays right there. And that is a Scar without boots chasing people down and picking up kills. That is an amazing play by him on Diana. It's a risky champion to give away. The uh, thing is, Gambit knows that Dignitas picks Diana a whole heck of a lot and is happy to grab that champion. And uh, Skara says, probably shouldn't let me have that. No, and Skara really showing why they're going to have that champion potentially taken away from them or contested in some of the other games. This is, of course, a best of three series. Mm -hmm. This is still only game number one, so anything is still up in the air for the remaining two games of this series. However, right now, Gambit Gaming, they had their early advantages. Dignitas, surprisingly, at that point in time where Gambit is usually strongest, winds up turning something around on them. I'm really interested to see what the reaction is coming out from Gambit. Big gaming. Of course, by killing Edward in that mid lane, as well as taking the tower, they've taken down one of those advantages. He's bought two Oracle's Elixirs so far, and he lost the second one. So that means their support, he's going to be suffering a little bit in the gold count. He even went for a Doran shield just to get a little bit tankier up in the face of the enemy. Mm -hmm. That's going to be an item that's not going to yield the highest investment as the game goes longer and longer. That's true. It's going to be interesting. And the thing is, he actually bought that just after killing uh, Skara after that prior team fight in the mid lane. He went back, upgraded Ruby Stightstone, bought Doran's shield, and then died immediately afterwards with the Doran's <laughs> shield. So it already didn't really reap any benefits for him. We'll see if that ends up panning out well. He might want a stronger shield if it's not going to wind up blocking the enemy, charging in with swords Ooh. and spears and everything. But I don't know if it's guaranteed to protect against Mystic Shots or Blades of the Rune King. So that might be something that Adoran needs to work on for his next item. But we Doran's have anti Blade of the Rune King. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> I don't know about that. Doran's hammer of smashing swords. Doran's hammer of smashing swords. Tom, you should design items for us. I really should. That that be my official title would be Doran's Workshop Maker. <laughs> However, Gambit Gaming, we see giving the blue buff away to Alex Itch. He's going to like that on kill. Of course, the intervention is going to have a shorter cooldown. I actually really haven't seen him pop that ultimate ability yet. There hasn't really been a big group fight, just a couple sniping one or two kills here or there. Yeah, exactly. It's been it's been sort of very sporadic. Uh, aside from, you know, a couple of teammates have picked up like one or two kills in a row, but these have all been sort of one-off kills throughout the entire game. Uh, and, you know, they've done a very good job of, kind of one side or the other. 
Dignitas finds a kill, then Gambit finds a kill, then Dignitas finds a kill, then Gambit finds a kill. Well, Dignitas might find a kill here, but it looks like they are not going to wind up engaging. Patoy landing a death sentence onto Alex Itch, of course, being a primary target for this fight. Gambit Gaming now on the side of the map from Dignitas. Edward with his third Oracle's Lecture of the game. They're pressuring down on this tower free, but Dignitas looks to maybe turn this around. Well, they're going to look for something. The Thresh pull. Nice juke by Darren actually stops in his boots and says, ah, that's going to go in front of me. He waits for it. Nice, nice job dodging that one. You guys gonna actually recall back for items and or mana at least. Oh, He's oh. just spent his money on a BF sword, so Infinity Edge coming next from that Ezreal. There we go, they're just trying to keep the turret alive. Aether comes out. He actually thought they might be diving and pop his ult across that one. But well. Gaming, Gaming said, no, we're going to take Dragon. And interestingly enough, we've talked about in the LCS matches how Blade of the Rune King isn't really rush worthy on any of these AD carries anymore, but we've seen Cutie Pie pick it up. Then we have Zed in the top lane, or the solo lane matchup for Gambit Gaming picking one up of him. Now we'll see here the Equalizer goes off. It looks like they want to go in on this one. Crumbs rushes in. The bullet time comes out from Genja. Now it's a lot of pain right there. Alex is dropped very, very low. Genja picks up one, though. That's going to be a harsh situation, but Darren's going to trade back that one. Two kills picked up so far for Dignitas, and Cutie Pie, with his own suite of crowd control, is chasing this one down. Can they find Genja? Scar with the Q. What are they going to go for next? He's still getting dropped very, very low. Diamond comes back in. He tries to find Cutie Pie, who pops barrier, keeps himself alive, but then Genja finds him back. Two for two in this fight, and GG are now chasing, and he kills Scar before Scar can kill him. And now this is their dragon, unless Patoy does something miraculous. Well, Gambit turned that fight around. They wind up going three for two in their favor. They are all extremely low. However, Kiwi Kiki can't do anything. But Toy, can he slip out? Edward pulls him towards the wall. Not quite going to be enough. He does see the ward going over there as well. Kiwi Kid tries to shoot out a harpoon, but nothing doing there. Gambit Gaming take the fight, and they take the dragon. Yeah, three for two plus a dragon, and Genja is five and zero. His lifesteal, and the guy runs lifesteal quints as well, by the way. Just completely keeping himself sustained in that fight. He was dropped so low by the end there, but managed to work his way out of it. Actually take Dragon most of the time as well. So, gotta say, big props to Ganja. Very, very well positioned against a lot of all-in champions and being a misfortune. Well, that's what we talked about earlier. The positioning advantages that Gambit Gaming gets on the opposing teams. We saw Dignitas. They kept jockeying back and forth for it. They wind up getting the upper hand from that one. And considering that they took two kills down from Gambit Gaming's side, they get a little confidence boost. We see, of course, Cutie Pie. This is kind of his... This is what Cutie Pie does. Mm -hmm. He goes aggressive as soon as possible. He goes into the front lines of everything. That is the little bit of positioning that Gambit needed, even though they were down in members of that dragon fight, to turn it around. Once Cutie Pie was out of that situation, it was all Gambit. Yeah, and you're just seeing how well Gambit does, in fact, team fight. That even though they got jumped on, uh, you know, they, they were able to track cooldowns. You saw uh, Crumbs was actually forced to burn his ultimate before the fight even started because he got caught. And then you saw the equalizer go by and said, guys, we're still going to be okay to team fight this. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and group up this position well and then fight. And you just saw how well they managed to mop it up at the very, very end. This is what Gambit does best, and it is a team fight. Well, that is the mid-game fight that Gambit usually takes in their victories, or at least on their way to victory. It secures them about a 4,000 solid gold advantage. The kills are all evened up. Tower's still a little bit in the favor of Team Dignitas, but Edward with these multiple Oracle's elixirs he's been acquiring, there's no real positional advantage that the Dignitas can get. Yes, they have the pressure of being able to push down into that mid lane with that second tower gone, but they have absolutely no ward coverage on the enemy side of the map. The only thing we have covered for them are Baron and a couple areas by their own bottom side jungle. That's going to be a rough situation, of course, because the only thing you really want to see is the top side because Baron Nasher really is now on the map and really available for them to take down. It's 23 minutes in, 7-7 seven to seven in kills, but again, Gambit gaming with a 4,000 gold lead. Mm -hmm. That's enough for you to say, we're the confident ones, we're the dominant ones, we can make some moves. Bring it, bro. Well, that's what Gambit does. They really do challenge these teams after they've gotten some sort of advantage. And very indicative of an old style, I'm going to even say the Moscow 5 style of playing here. Genja, after that Bloodthirster, has a BF sword in his inventory, but he goes back and picks up a Guardian Angel. Yeah, he wants to be a durable man. I mean, he, he knows that he is ahead. He, he's ahead of the curve as far as damage from AD carry goes. So he knows that he doesn't really need more. He'll already melt people down. There's not a huge tank to worry about in the front line. So he wants to make sure he doesn't get caught. He's fighting assassins. He needs to make sure he doesn't die. Well, by like you said, running those lifesteal quints and the armor penetration marks, he doesn't necessarily need to get one of those armor shred items as early. Although we do have a Zanya's Hourglass completed as well as a locket of the Iron Solari from the side of Team Dignitas. We'll have to see what Crumbs is going to wind up turning that additional cloth armor into from the side of him. But once they start getting that armor, that's when Genja's going to need the armor penetration. For the time being, like you said, why not just get tankier? Why not just refuse to die in these fights so he mm -hmm. can help mop up with 
this team. And I mean, just imagine how hard Dignitas has to all in to force a fight because Diamond has his passive where he's gonna be able to regenerate health really, really rapidly and probably survive. Uh, you've got Alex Ish on Kale who's gonna be able to give intervention to someone, keep them from going down. Genja, talked about a couple times already about the Guardian Angel. So Dignitas has to try really, really hard to pick up a kill and then they still won't get the kill. They've got to somehow scrape back from that and still pick something up. So it's going to make it very hard for Dickenhouse to win an easy team fight. Well, if they can get an easy team fight, is going to be the situation that they're put in right now. They are trying to put a little bit more eyes on the map. Some wards going down from the side of Patoy, as he is the only one with anything in his inventory that can do so. Has his sight stone. Stopped off of that philosopher stone first, so he didn't have the straight ward advantage that Edward hasn't been able to get. He actually hasn't really gone any further into the build after that either. He did a Kindle gem already. But Gamma Gaming trying to start something. Good arcane shift from Cutie Pie over the wall. Scar's going to go in, make it rain, and the equalizer go out. Good true shot barrage. Hits most of them members on Gamma Gaming side, but Crumbs winds up going down first in this one. And it's going to be them continuing on. Oh, they missed the Glitter Lance, but there's a slow. Scarif puts the shield onto himself, and Alex Ish is still chasing that one down. The stun from Batoy, the knockback as well. They're going to be able to walk back from that one. Intervention. Oh, but on the left-hand side, Cutie Pie forced a flash away. That's a two on four. Genja wants this one. He's going to dive right on in. Bullet time goes across. Cutie Pie has to barrier. He took no damage at all, Genji, on that one. Now Diamond going in, baited a little bit by that ultimate, but the remaining members of Gambit are still strong. Flash forward from Alex East, the Reckoning picks up the kill. Kiwi Kid has to flash over that wall. Is he going to be able to get away is the question. Meanwhile, we do have Genja reviving with the Guardian Angel. It's going to be shut down by Patoy. Scar is not going to get that one. Meanwhile, going back to the river, Kiwi Kid, is he going to get oh! Edward? He does! That's another Oracle's Elixir down for the side of Gambit Gaming. Kiwi Kid overheating, running as fast as possible. You have a Baron and Angel after you, Freak. I don't really bet on the machine in that one. Well, the Q is back up from the bear, and it doesn't even need it. It just gets a slowdown. Nice kill pick up there. But everyone has basically respawned at this point. You've actually got a four on three in about three seconds when QDP respawns for Dignitas. So they're actually not too bad on the map despite losing that fight by a kill. No, and the thing of it is, too, we saw Genji there with maybe a little bit, a little bit of cutie pie syndrome. He didn't pop the bullet time in that original engagement. They didn't really need to. They bursted down crumbs and then forced Dignitas back from that, so they could have gotten advantages. But he goes around behind the enemy tower, pops the bullet time, isn't really able to reap a reward for that one. Scar winds up coming back around the side. Help from Batoy. They take him down twice with that tower aggro. So not only have they picked up a kill on Misfortune, as well as well, Kiwi Kid with a very nice sniper shot going down onto Edward, but now that Guardian Angel is pop, so they don't have that revive on Misfortune. She is still, of course, going to have some advantages coming off of that yeah. one, but they don't have the double life of the AD carry. Alex Each, the, the intervention is still up for him. They're, he's going to have to burn that one on his AD carry this time around. Yeah, there's two things there, really, that, that's really important. Is One, in Season 3, we nerfed Guardian Angel to be more about the passive and less about the stats, mm -hmm. so he's not getting nearly that much armor and magic exist, uh, and so he's going to be pretty frail for the amount of gold he spent. The other is just to give Gigantic the biggest props ever to Kiwi Kid, because there was no ward in that brush when he killed Edward. You can hear of your E hits, and he hit shot the first one and said, oh, that hit. So he's roughly here and slowed and landed both in total fog of war. So Kiwi Kid with amazing precision there. But of course, Gambit Gaming, they are just in control of this game. 5,000 gold lead, they get a 6,000 gold lead. Dragon is theirs. Well, since we're at MLG Freak, would you say that he had no scope to snipe that one out? That was an MLG Pro No Scope 720. Oh, that was a very nice play by Kiwi Kid. Although Gambit Gaming, they're taking, what is this now, the fourth dragon in the game for them. They have gotten every single one at Dignitas. Unfortunately, hasn't really been able to really make a contestion of any of those. They are still up by that one tower they took earlier in the mid lane matchup, but now Gambit Gaming, the global gold, still starting to spiral further and further in their advantage. Even though Dignitas, they wind up uh, in that fight overall, like you said, they came out one kill behind. The advantage for Gambit Gaming really starting to show themselves as the gold count only gets further. And they're going to look for Alex. He's attacked to burn his ultimate already, so what's the focus going to be on? The box comes down. Look at the CC coming out from Dignitas, but here comes Darian into the mix. What will he find? Right now it's Alex each dead, said dead, but it's going to be a fire back. They're going to pick up two for themselves. Diamond up in front. Look for Edward now. Crumbs right in the front of the battle. He's going to get taken out pretty low. And look at Genjish completely forcing that one away. Ooh, Patoy had to run away into the minion camp, but right now that is actually a fight lead for Gambit Gaming. Dignitas Patoy, will he find anything? Not quite. He's trying to survive. Oh, he gets slowed by Diamond, and nope, that's going to be a four for two. 
wall, Gambit Gaming did a really good job of, even though all the crowd control came out from Dignitas in that fight, they were able to take down the AD carry from the side of Dignitas. Cutie Pie got melted down. Genja got his ultimate off across most of the members of Team Dignitas because they wanted to fight on that Thresh box. They wanted to fight with all the crowd control. And that's just a perfect setup for Misfortune. Even if you don't have the best AoE composition yourself, you can use the enemy's positioning against you. And we talk about it time and time again. That's how the side of Gambit Gaming wins their fights, and that's how they wanted to clean it up against Dignitas. That was an absolutely great play, but of course, Skara says, hey, uh, Baron Nasher is a no-go for you guys. Actually runs himself right by there, stops them. Yeah, forced away from that one. But you're just seeing incremental advantages come through here. Gambit have not given up a dragon all game. They're even down in turrets and don't really care because uh, just look at lane comparisons, 104 to 204. Zed is having a field day, even if he does die pretty early. He's got so much burst now with Bloodthirster Ruin King that he's destroying people. Uh, and then you just look at the team fights and they're going just plus one, plus one, plus two, plus one and Gambit are just clawing their way above this game. Well, Kiwi Kid isn't exactly, as you mentioned, having the best time in what might actually be, uh, technically, is this his global debut? I'm gonna go ahead and coin that yeah. phrase. So, Kiwi Kid not having a good time with the non-NA LCS teams, and the Gambit Gaming really did harp upon their solo laner from the side of Team Dignitas. We saw him going down twice in the early game, hasn't quite been able to find a safe spot on the map to farm, and what we could see, very indicative is items. He even has the home guard on his sorcerer's shoes, just so he can get that extra healing and get back into the fight as quickly as possible. Right now, he's pretty much an equalizer, and that's it for the team. Once he drops that yeah. ultimate, his usage in these team fights is very, very slim. And that's not too bad. To be Rumble, be at least level 11, and have some magic pen, that's enough to be a pretty good Rumble no matter what. You would like to be tanking devs and have some ability power to actually put down Flame Spitters. I mean, mm -hmm. it's obviously useful and helps your team, but as long as he's got Magic Pen and has a level 2 ultimate, he's going to do okay for now. What's going to be difficult is getting him to level 16. That's going to be quite a while, but you're seeing both souls for Gambit have actually hit that mark, so there's actually a pretty big difference in power. He'll at least use Oh, we are having a threshold go down onto Diamond Prox. There's the Equalizer pot a little bit early from the side of Kiwi Kid. Dinatosh trying to make something of it, but a bullet time from the side of Gambit Gaming. Going to deter them for the time being. That misfortune, I don't know how she holds two Bloodthirsters and two guns at the same time. They're, they're balanced, actually. She's really, really acrobatic, and is actually balancing the Bloodthirsters like on her guns as she fires. Oh, I thought she was just kind of shooting the Bloodthirsters out of the guns. Oh, that'd be cool. That would be very deadly, but now... That would make more sense for the damage output. Well, the bullet time's down, so the majority of misfortune Fortune's team fight damage is really not there. Dignitas, really good job of mooring Gambit Gaming back into that mid lane, making the push. They're going to try to take down this Baron as quick as possible. Of course, they have a Blade of the Rune King and Infinity Edge on Ezreal. Is it going to be enough, though? Gambit knows they're doing this. There's a ward there. They haven't gotten it. For it. The Baron wants it going down for Dignitas. Darien goes in. Diamond Prox on the other side tries to get Batoy. Darien, there's the Lulu ultimate, knocking up two members of Dignitas. They're not that bad in this fight. Cutie Pie takes down Darien. Scar with the Zonis Hourglass will stay alive. Crumbs has gone down, but now Gambit starting to turn things around on Dignitas. Scar goes down in that fight, and so far it's a two for three. A two for one. Two for one, a nice lantern by Petroy is going to get Cutie Pie safe. He keeps turning around to deal damage, but there's a diamond right on the other side that could be jumping for him. Now it's going to be Dignitas getting out. So that's actually really, really nice play by Dig overall. They went for the comeback Baron. They got about as caught as you would expect from them. They went minus one kill for a Baron. Now, the problem for them is they might lose Nice try for the steal. They might lose a turret off of this, maybe even two, which will actually start really hurting Dignitas' chances on the map. And Cutie Pie, okay, he's got, he's got a Kiwi Kid. Like, he keeps almost staying a little bit too long and, like, almost getting caught, and I'm just, like, a little bit worried about him. Well, Genja did get spotted out by Kiwi Kid coming around the side as well. And for the time being, Dignitas is going to keep that bottom second tower alive. So advantage is a little bit in favor for them. As you said, they take the Baron, so they have that global gold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they come out negative one in the kill side of things, but they keep their tower alive. And look at the, p the players that have the Baron buff still alive. Cutie Pie, who's been a big driving factor in winning these team fights for Dignitas. Mm -hmm. Kiwi Kid, he's going to love having that little bit of extra boost to his stats to get him back to a point where, like you said, even if Dignitas only uses this Baron buff to to safely get Kiwi Kid to level 16 and maybe put a couple wards down on the map, that's yeah. going to be huge for them going into the later stages of the game. Exactly. This is going to be kind of a, a, a game of scaling right here because really what Darren's going to do is try to one-shot one guy. And the difficulty there is he cannot, he cannot go for Scar because Zonia's Hourglass is like the best item you could ever buy when fighting a Zed. Uh, second to like having Kale on your team, which you can't buy in an item. I mean, Guardian Angel kind of, but, but not really. Uh, so he's got to find a different target. Last time we went for Kiwi Kid, which really, to me, was, was I think it was Kiwi Kid anyway. That's what I, I thought it was. And it, which was kind of strange because he already popped his ultimate. Like, he already got his first Flame Spitter down. There's really not much point focusing down at Rumble. And even still, Kiwi Kid actually got out of that fight anyway. So 
Um, I think Darian needs to think long and hard about who he actually focuses and make sure that that guy goes down because he is that all-in assassin. He does need to find that one kill, and his team can follow up from that. Well, Gambit Gaming continue to be the Dragon Slayers that they are. Take this next dragon on the map as well. So they still are keeping themselves ahead in the global gold. So many Oracle Zlixers have been bought by Edward. I've actually lost count. I know that's really bad being the guy who made all the stats for the bands and fakes, but... And you just did all that math for a I little did. while ago. Yeah. That 20,000 bigger than 4,000, but now you can't count to five. I'm sorry, so... I, I don't know. These bigger numbers, they appeal to me a little bit more. These smaller <laughs> numbers, not so much. They don't really Whatever. hold They don't really hold my attention span, I guess. But Gambit Gaming so far, they're still continuing to put pressure on the map, but they do have to be wary. Even if Dignitas doesn't have a full Baron up team, even if they are still behind, Baron buff is something that can make games turn around. And if anybody knows about games turning around, it's going to be Gambit Gaming. Oh, yeah, they are, they are all about... I mean, really on both sides of it. They're yes. great at comebacks, but they're great at throwing away games they have won as well. So we'll see what ends up happening in this case right now. Gambit is kind of back into their own jungle, clearing things out. I think Diamond just stole all of them with a uh, ground slam right there. So no thank you, Kale. But here's the interesting thing, because normally when a team gets Baron, it's the team that's winning, and they usually try to capitalize off of Baron and do something. But Ding the House are like, yeah, we just want to farm and catch up. And so normally you're like, it's 34 minutes in. Whoa, you're farming in a solo lane at the bottom. Skara, oh right, there's no Baron on the map. Mm -hmm. I guess you'll just wait around then and get farm. And so I I'm curious to see what happens because Dragon are still going over and over to Gambit. Like, they still know that they're up in gold. And, and actually, all the gold at this point is just from Dragons. Everything else is equal. Well, I mean, one of the things you have to keep in mind is by Dignitas knocking down that second tier mid tower so early in the game, they have that forward pressure they could potentially put down on mid lane. So if Gambit Gaming wants to split off to the side and maybe push one of those other lanes, if Dignitas charges up that mid lane, there's nothing stopping them. And if Gambit Gaming gets caught out of position, well, that's going to be advantage towards the side of Team Dignitas. So they really have to be not so much reactive to what Dignitas is doing, but at least be in the general vicinity where Dignitas, like you said, has to use this Baron buff defensively or had to use the Baron buff defensively as it does look like it has expired on their mm -hmm. side and just try to gain advantages through farming. Gambit Gaming, they're going to be content to sit back and farm as well. That's going to wind up giving Genji the last Whisper he's acquired now, which is kind of the missing piece in the puzzle right here as he does have the armor penetration as Dignitas starts getting a bit further in their builds. It's a very interesting setup though because you kind of look at Gambit's damage output and it's it's very ultimate focused. It's Genja popping his ulti and of course just itemizing completely around the bullet time. It's Darian assassinating one guy with the death mark and then just hoping they have enough to follow up from there. And so they're like very, very spike focused and then pretty much lower damage output afterwards. Like all they've really got is like a weird, uh, uh, like a weirdly itemized misfortune and then Alex Ish on Nash's Tooth Kale. And, and I, I'm curious to see how that fight, how that kind of pans out in a long form battle now that Ignatius is more or less caught up in gold. Uh, it's just going to be interesting to me because Dean Toss has better overtime damage. Well, yeah, they have a bit more sustainable damage, whereas on the side of Gambit Gaming, if you want to talk about sustainable damage, you really pretty much have Hail, but a Threshold goes down for Toy on the Darien, trying to catch him out of there. Alex Each will want to take him down the tower, so Dignitas looks like they're going to disengage for now. Scar kind of hunting around the outside, kind of wants to go in on this one, but I don't necessarily know if that's going to be the best thing for Dignitas. Gambit, though, they're going to back away after getting the tower. Gambit are going to go ahead and take that free advantage for themselves. We do know that Baron Nash is coming up in just a minute and a half, so... At this point, oh, they're going to go in for Crumbs. There's the flip. They're going to go for this one. Let's see if they can get the damage of it. Vox comes by. Crumbs drops incredibly low. Equalizer comes across. Diamond is invincible. And here comes the damage onto Kiwi Kid. Is it going to be enough? It's still the chase in from Darien. They're trying to chase out the cutie pie. Good CC from Scar. They flip him back into the team. Darien picks up the kill onto Kiwi Kid finally. Now it's Scar left alone. Pop Sonya's. Can he find Darien with the ultimate? Ignite goes off. Will he die to it? Yes, he will. Now cutie pie almost alone. Completely outfought by Ganja. Goes for the ult. Oh, nice. Juking by cutie pie. He will live but it's a four versus two. Yeah, so even though Cutie Pie gets away from that one, Gambit Gaming, once again, positional advantages on their side. They look to be disengaging with that one, turn around, just wind up taking the fight to the side of Dignitas. Cutie Pie's gonna recall here, gotta be careful. Kale is right there. Alex each flash and a quick swipe with that Lich Bane proc, and all of a sudden, there's no more Cutie Pie on the map. That is not cute for Dignitas right now. We're seeing Diamond and Genja push their way through the mid lane. That is their turret. They've got six seconds on the revive. They have enough time to do a little bit of damage. Nice stun from Patoy. He knows he can't really 1v2 this, but he'll try to land some crowd control because they're all inning for the turret here. Patoy knows he's a little bit safe. They pulled turret aggro. Diamond trying to run away with that Q. Crumbs is looking for it. He's going to flash. 
There's the knockout. Is it going to be enough? The rest of the team is coming back to try to pick this kill up. Patoy pulls them back in as well. It's a 2v2 so far. Crumbs, another knockout. Where's the rest of your team? Equalizer is going to find Genja. Yes, it will. Look at the damage I put onto him. That's going to be the Garden Angel drop down. I don't see him surviving this encounter. No, nope, Genja's going to revive only to beat Jeff here. Tries to get a little bit of damage down with that Make It Rain, but Kiwi Kid's going to wind up picking up that kill. And that's kind of a good call by Dignitas. Even though Volibear was the low target, they shift focus down onto Misfortune. The three talent strike from Crumb, I thought it was maybe a misclick. He gets the first two on Volibear and then immediately switches focus to Misfortune. But they knock her up in that case. They get the flay down from Thresh and they stall enough time for Kiwi Kid to come up. Now the AD carry, that big team fight damage from the side of Gambit Gaming, it's not available. But you know what is on the map, free? Baron, Baron Nash. Nasher. That was nice. We that got was, that. Yeah, high five. Jinx. Oh, I owe you a soda. Good thing they're free here. Oh, good point. So we are going to have Gambit putting a little pressure. Dark, oh, the death mark goes down on the Kiwi Kid. Trying to get some more damage down there is Darian Toy, though. But Scar comes in from the back, getting down the move on the Alex. He's the invulnerability on himself. Scar is going to want to get Xanya's. Alex is going to go on a rampage. He takes down Crumbs, though. Double kills. He had Scar at the notch on his belt. There's Kiwi Kid, though, picking up a kill on Darian. But the rest of Gambit Gaming rolling in. Triple kill's been acquired for Alex each. Cutie Pie, you've evaded death for how long? I don't know if you can do it this time around, though. He's getting chased down by Volibear. Diamond Frost coming in. Alex Each and Edward. That's going to be the unofficial quadra kill for Alex Each. And that's why he's one of the best mid laners in the game, Free. And they did that entire fight four versus five. Oh. Genja just now revived and got out of his base. And they're like, yeah, we, we fought 4v5 and won. No big deal. Of course, only one turret left in the base. This is almost certainly game one going to Gambit Gaming here. Very excellent play by the Russians. You can see that last turret going down. Nexus is there's Gambit Gaming going to take game one over Dignitas. Very nice stuff coming out from the first international exhibition match. We said Dignitas coming into this one. Star said they had something up their sleeve. Potentially that Thresh pickup could have been it, or they could be holding out on it. But now they're down 1-0 against the team of Gambit Gaming. This is not a team you want to be down in a series against. No. Even when they're trying out something new, they're extremely dangerous and extremely, extremely good with it. So yep. we'll have to see here. What's the response from Dignitas in this one? What was the main factor, you think, Free, coming out in this game? What did Dignitas really do wrong that let Gambit Gaming run away with it? So for Gambit, it was definitely the focus on the Rumble early on. Mm -hmm. Certainly the early mid game was close. Yeah, they traded turrets, things like that. But the fact that they got him twice, just over and over, they kind of crushed that Rumble. He was always very, very, very far behind. Uh, he was always very far behind Darien in the game. I mean, at one point he was at half his minion kills, and that wasn't just because he died twice in lane, but a lot of it was because he was just so far behind he couldn't ever fight anyone heads up. He was always going to lose any given duel, so he had to like look for farm in random areas that were protected and no one could stop him, and, and so he had kind of a delayed build. It's like, yeah, you know, he's level 11 and has dual magic penetration. He's going to be okay, but, you know, it wasn't the death cap rumble we'd normally seen crush games throughout the weekend so far. Like, he was definitely behind in that. That really was a big factor there because his damage output needed to be higher. And one of the other things we're going to have to see coming out from Dignitas, can they hang on to the map control? Edward lived up to his name the entirety of that matchup. Like I said, like you said before, I can't count to the number five. But that's the amount of Oracle's elixirs he wound up getting. He went straight for that Ruby Sightstone and didn't get another item until he finished his Boots of Lucidity and went for that Locket of the Iron Solari. The map presence of Gambit, even though Dignitas had that mid lane pressure down to the second outer turret, completely knocked down, completely in their favor, they just never lost control of the map on Gambit's side. And we saw that take its toll on Dignitas. Every single dragon going in favor of Gambit. They were able to get position on Kiwi Kid in some of these ganks early on because he didn't have the vision. They were clearing it out that early in the stages of the game. Can they keep control of the map, or are they going to lose control of the series? Uh, I hope they don't lose control of the series. I do always like seeing best of threes go to all three games. And I think Dignitas is a team that can do it. They're very, very strong as a team. They know how to rally back. You're seeing them on your screen now. Very focused. You're seeing game faces from all of them. Less smiles than normal. But they're very focused here, and, and they, they did put on a good show, right? They, they had a pretty good performance overall. If not for that top lane getting camped really hard, everyone did a pretty good job. They team fought well. They had a really cool team composition. They could actually use Sin Zhao to knock everyone into the box walls, mm -hmm. and it allowed them this really cool team fight initiation. It was, it was a cool synergy. It was, it was really fun to watch that sort of happen. Um, so you know their champ selects good. You know their individual, individual play was good. Mm -hmm. None of them like had completely like, face palmy bad performances. Mm -hmm. It was just, well, okay, Kiwi Kid got camped. 
Well, we'll have to see if anything shakes it up in the picks and bans for game number two. Dignitas, they're down 0-1 against Gambit Gaming. Can they force that best of three series, or is it going to be Gambit taking a 2 a victory? Guys, we're as excited as you are to find out about this one. We're going to take a commercial break. When we get back, game two between Gambit Gaming and Team Dignitas.